Hello there, a very good evening. Welcome to Rupvahani News. I'm Chamindi Samrasekara. A very good evening indeed. I'm Javed Bongzo and we begin with the headlines of tonight's news. On to those and other stories in detail now. President Maitri Pala Sirisen says that every possible measure will be taken to safeguard the future generation from the tobacco and drug menace. The president adds that he has instructed the relevant sections to increase the VAT on tobacco and to exempt all private hospitals from the VAT. He made these remarks participating in the 104th commemoration of the Sri Lanka Amadhyapa Mahasabha today. President of the Sabha and the Mahanayaka of the Kote Shri Kalyani Samagri Dharma Mahasanga Sabha Venerable Dr. Itta Pani Dhammalankarthera has presided over the ceremony at the BMICH in Colombo. Souvenirs were presented to those who have taken leadership in the eradication of drugs from Sri Lanka. At this occasion, a special memento was also presented to the President for his role to eliminate this problem. Mahanaka of the Kote Shri Kalyani Sama Gridharma Mahasanga Sabha Venerable Dr. Itta Pani Dhammalankarthera said that it is a well-known fact that an ex extensive program is underway to control the spread of drugs as pointed out in the election manifesto. The Thera added that a student questioned him as to why the president is making so much effort to curb the menace when it is so easy to cancel the permits given for cigarettes and liquor. The Thera further said that it would have been extremely beneficial beneficial to the country if such an order could be carried out. He also said that he has discussed on this issue with the National Security Council. A decision has been taken at the meeting of the Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces to set up intelligent division units to receive information in this regard. President Maitri Pala Sirisena said that a great fortune of the nation is that both the President and the Prime Minister refrain from using liquor. This is a significant moment in the Sri Lankan history. In the past, there had not been an opportunity to express clearly and directly the opinions. The President further said that an extremely good opportunity has been created to win the war against drugs. The President has recalled how the previous government spent a large amount of money on a campaign against liquor. An investigation has to be conducted to find out how much was spent in this regard. The President added that, however, the country was not freed from the liquor menace. Sahayogiya Raja Yadayam Vardhane Karagan Arakpusikarat Pekunan Netuva Meka Karan Behakiyan Matayak Dharanwanan Bandaga Aran Saholing Ho Epili Bandha Vagakim Dharanaya Mama Kishetma Pratipatthiyat Ekangavinni Nehekiyan Karanava Bohom Pahadiluva Sandahan Karan Natoona Prime Minister Rani Vikrama Singha reiterates that the program to develop the country will be carried forward granting relief to the people despite the obstacles he also points out that most appropriate time for this purpose has arisen. The Prime Minister made these observations while taking part in the membership promotion drive of the United National Party in Senkaragala today. A large number of people have obtained party membership at this occasion. The Prime Minister further said that it would be possible to provide more relief to the masses under the mediation of the President once the court cases against the VAT come to an end. Prime Minister further stated that plans are underway to elevate the Matal Airport to an income earning status and also to extend the candy town from Peradeniya to Kundasale.
Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe said that they are here to fulfill the pledges given to the people, but some are against their activities. The Prime Minister also said that under the democratic government, everybody has the opportunity to protest, but the government will fulfill their obligations while catching those who were responsible for frauds and corruption. There are agitations all over to topple the government. However, the efforts of the agitators are not motivated to safeguard democracy or to appear on behalf of free education. What they say is not to take political revenge by acting against those who are responsible for frauds and to demand the ousting of the government. The Prime Minister also said that it is the rogues trying to dismiss the government. They are prepared to reply through street protests. Today, Sri Lanka has no problem with the United Nations Human Rights Organization. President Maitripal Sena was invited to attend a meeting of world leaders. Minister Mangala Samarivira has yielded results by following the policies of the government. The Prime Minister also said that he saw a news item in Monday's Daily Mirror newspaper requesting to remove the minister from his post. He further said that there had been demands in the past urging his resignation as well. He also said that this newspaper had earlier written against the Muslim people. The Premier commenting on the economic situation said that Sri Lanka has received one $1.5 billion worth of bonds. The Prime Minister added that Sri Lanka was given $6.7 billion worth of bonds, but they refused such a quantity as it was not necessary. एक मैत्रीपाल सिटी से न जनादि पुत्र प्रजानत्त में आंधो खड़न नहीं दो एक गुलो की हिंग पीना टक्के आए ये मंदिरे मामा इन्ने दे मम पीना टक्के आए मजे इन्ने इन्द आराधना करने से The United Kingdom says in its latest human rights report that the human rights situation in Sri Lanka has continued to improve during this year. It adds that however much remains to be done for the island nation to fulfill its commitments in this regard. The report was released yesterday by the UK Foreign and Commonwealth Office. The UK report has stated that it welcomed the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, Prince Zaid Rad Al Hussein's assessment of Sri Lanka's progress. It also commends the Sri Lankan government's continuing determination to address legacy of conflict. The past six months have seen an improved environment for civil society and human rights defenders and the passing of the Right to Information Bill in June was a positive step towards a more transparent and accountable government. The report adds that the UK will continue to encourage and support the government of Sri Lanka in fulfilling its commitments to improve human rights and democracy. And the Asian Human Rights Commission strongly condemns a statement made by former President Mahindra Rajapaksa regarding the setting up of an office of the missing persons. It also says that his statement is a blatant attack on rule of law. Mahindra Rajapaksa has recently stated that the establishing of the Office of the Missing Persons is a betrayal of the armed forces. The Asian Human Rights Commission, issuing a special communique in this regard, said that it is a statement inappropriate for a former head of state and a prominent political leader in Sri Lanka. Enforced disappearances are considered as internationally recognized heinous crimes. The report points out that therefore by saying that they should not be investigated in Sri Lanka directly implies that certain groups in the armed forces were connected to such crimes. It is one of the basic norms of a civilized society that crimes must be investigated. The report also says that a civilized legal system could exist only on the acceptance of fundamental norms that all crimes should be prosecuted. The commission reports added that the previous regime was known for cases of assassinations and disappearances of persons of high caliber. It adds that the intention of the former president in making such a statement appears to be to highlight himself as a savior of the armed forces. German police say that the gunman who killed nine people in Munich was obsessed with mass shooting and had an obvious link to Norwegian mass murderer Andres Breivik. Further, they say that they have found a written material on attacks. The gunman who later killed himself had a 9mm block pistol and 300 bullets. Police are investigating whether they 
whether he may have lured his victims through a Facebook invitation to a restaurant. He is suspected of using a fake account under a girl's name to invite people to the McDonald's restaurant where he launched his attack. He murdered 77 people in Norway on 22nd July 2011, killing eight with a bomb in the capital Oslo before shooting dead 69 at a summer camp for young centre-left political activists on the island of Utøya. Now he is held in solitary confinement in Norway after being sentenced to 21 years in 2012. He recently won an appeal against the tough regime of his incarceration. He harbored radical right wing waves and said that his attack was aimed at stopping Muslim immigration to Europe. Friday evening's attack at the Olympia shopping mall also left 27 people injured, including children. Police said that gunmen had been in psychiatric care receiving treatment for depression. Sri Lanka condemns a deadly shooting in German city of Munich. A foreign ministry spokesperson said that Sri Lanka condemns the shooting in which at least nine people were killed. Sri Lanka also extends condolences to the families of the victims and wish quick recovery to those injured. 18-year-old pistol-wielding attacker opened fire in a busy shopping mall in Munich yesterday. The attacker was later found dead of suspected self-inflicted gunshot wounds on his head. And people in Tangal town are facing a drinking water problem due to the prevailing dry climate. The Tangal Water Supply Board requests the general public to use the pipe-borne pure drinking water supplied by the board sparingly. A dry climatic condition has been prevailing in the Virakati Irrigation Division for the past few months. As a result of the water level in the Kirimo Oya has declined rapidly. The Kirimo Oya project caters to the water needs of the farmers and also to Tangal Town and adjacent areas including Beliatta. Regional engineer of the Tangal Water Supply Project, JPB Jasuria, says that the situation may aggravate if there is no rain in the next few days. A 16-year-old female student has succumbed to her injuries when she was knocked down by a train in Kandagoda, Ambalangoda today. The brother of the deceased has filed a complaint to the Ambalangoda police stating that his sister was pushed to the train by her lover. However, the engine driver of the train has placed a note at the Balapitiya railway station that he witnessed the student jumping in front of the train. A CCTV camera fixed at a house located nearby has also recorded pictures of the student walking along the railway track. The victim of this incident was Nimesha Madhumali, a student of grade 11 at the Kalvadumulla Vidyalaya in Ambalangoda. The Ambalangoda police are conducting further investigations. The Indian Deputy High Commissioner in Sri Lanka says that talks alone could solve the fisherman issue. Deputy Indian High Commissioner to Sri Lanka A. Natarajan said in Tanjavur in Tamil Nadu that a political solution has to be found to the problem facing the Indian fishermen in the Pork Strait. Speaking on the sidelines of a workshop at the Tamil University, Natarajan said that the internal strives of the island nation in the past 30 years kept the Sri Lankan fishermen away from the seas. But with the peace returning to Sri Lanka, the fishermen too have come forward to explore their potentials. Nigerian president briefed on developments in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's High Commission to Nigeria, Thambi Raja Ravintaran, has presented his credentials to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Mohamed Buhari, at the Presidential Villa in Abuja recently. The High Commissioner took this opportunity to appraise the Nigerian President on all significant developments that have taken place in Sri Lanka since the new government that came to power under the leadership of President Maitri Pala Sirisena. The people who were displaced from their original lands due to Murugaha Khan, the Kaluganga scheme, say that they are immensely pleased with the benefits of this reservoir project. This is the largest irrigation project to be carried out in Sri Lanka's recent history. 
The Morogahakanda Kaluganga project would create two gigantic reservoirs in the Knuckles Range. It will irrigate in both seasons around 82,000 hectares of cultivated lands in the Anuradhapura, Polar Narwa, Matale and Trincomalee districts. Drinking water facilities will also be provided to more than 200,000 farmer families. Another objective is to add 25 megawatts of power to the national grid. Other benefits include development of the inland fisheries and to provide a good market for inherent crops and other produce in the area. Most of the resettled persons will be located in several divisional secretary divisions in the Matale district. The President and the Prime Minister will preside over the ceremony to deposit treasures in the main dam of the Kaluganga Reservoir on the 25th of this month. Funeral of the mother of Minister S. B. Disanayaka, Grace Prema Panditharatna, has taken place at the Hangurankita General Cemetery this evening. Mrs. Panditharatna was 84 years old at the time of her demise. President Maitri Pala Sirisen and Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singh have paid their last respects to the remains at Madangvela residence in Hangurankita today. We now take a look at Asia in a minute. Floods in North and Central China have killed at least 87 people with scores missing and hundreds of thousands forced from home. Police and security personnel maintained strict vigil across India's Kashmir today as curfews entered third week in the aftermath of widespread violence over the killing of a separatist militant early this month. Indonesia deported three Australians yesterday who were detained over a media row that forced their plane to make an emergency landing in Bali, following a brawl between six passengers. Three members of a family were among four people who died after a dilapidated building collapsed yesterday in India's eastern Darjeeling town. More than 330,000 signatures reportedly have been collected for a petition calling for the closures of a Chinese aquarium where polar bears and many other animals are being held. Welcome back to the news. JVP leader and parliamentarian Anura Kumar Disanayaka says that people in the north and south should not fight to separate from each other. He stresses that they should fight to unite. The MP addressing the Brotherhood Day ceremony in Jaffna today further said that economic imbalance is a common problem of people in the north and south. JVP leader and parliamentarian Andhra Kumar Disanayaka said that the Sri Lankans have been discussing on national unity for decades, but this has still not become a reality. He also said that there is no problem among the Sinhala, Tamil and Muslim communities. Only a class dispute remains. The JVP leader also said that we all have contributed to devise a national flag. He questioned as to how this flag could divide it into Sinhala, Tamil or Muslim sections. He also said that only 10% belongs to the capitalist class and the remaining 90% is represented by the non-capitalist class. The Socialist Youth Society has distributed leaflets in the Jaffna town today calling for national unity in the north and in south. The Atamala Alla waterfall faces the threat of destruction due to the construction of a minor hydropower station. Atamala Alla in Pitabadara is the only waterfall belonging to the Nilwala River. It is 52 meters in height. However, an environmental destruction had taken place due to the commencement of the construction of a mini hydropower station along the waterfall in the year 2008. 
constructions had to be suspended due to the strong protests of the residents and the environmentalists. However, the residents say that the efforts are still underway to speed up the constructions. Environmentalists point out that approval has been obtained to go ahead with the construction through preparation of devious documents. They point out that an enchanting national resource could not be allowed to be destroyed in order to generate 2 megawatts of electricity. The U.S. is to work with Sri Lanka Navy for maritime security and stability. The U.S.'s New Orleans will arrive in Sri Lanka for a port visit tomorrow. The ship will be in the island aiming to increase bilateral ties with the Sri Lankan Navy and to provide U.S. support and training for humanitarian assistance and disaster relief. Around 200 sailors of the Sri Lankan Navy will participate in two-day humanitarian assistance and disaster relief training led by members of the 13th MFU and experts from the United States Agency for International Development. 13th MFU Forces Commander Major John Arnold says that the U.S.'s New Orleans looks forward to exchanging best practices with their Sri Lankan partners. And Kuwait expressed its readiness to partner with Sri Lanka to develop the local fisheries sector. The Persian Gulf state, Kuwait, with a vibrant economy, has expressed its interest to develop Sri Lanka's seafood industry. Kuwait Minister of Commerce Yusuf M. Abdullah Al Ali said at a meeting with Sri Lankan Minister of Industry and Commerce Rishabh Badudin that Kuwait presently imports fish from other South Asian countries but not from Sri Lanka. Stressing on the strong Sri Lanka Kuwait bilateral relations, Mr. Badudin pointed out that Sri Lanka's strategic position is a great opportunity for global investors. Well, that's it for local news. For news is coming up next. On to some international news in brief now. At least 38 of pro-government troops were killed when rebels blew up a tunnel underneath a building in the Syrian city of Aleppo. The Tuar al-Sham rebel group posted a video online that appeared to show a building used by government troops being destroyed by a huge blast. Aleppo is divided between the rebel-held East and government West. Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has extended the period in which suspects can be detained without charge to 30 days. The statement also ordered the closure of more than 1,000 private schools and more than 1,200 associations. It follows last week's failed coup attempt against Erdogan and the subsequent declaration of a state of emergency. A Russian balloonist has set a new record for flying non-stop around the world. Fyodor Konsko balloon was said to have passed directly over the airfield in the Australian town of Northam, where he began his journey 11 days ago. If his record is confirmed by the World Air Sports Federation, he will have taken more than two days off the record set by American Steve Fawcett in 2002. Dozens of outfits worn by Queen Elizabeth have gone on display at Buckingham Palace in a collection of her clothes at that open to the public today. The exhibition also marks celebration of the 90th birthday of the world's oldest monarch. The Queen is well known for block colour dressing, favouring bright and bold colours to ensure she is easily visible on important occasions. The Buckingham Palace exhibition is open till October 2, 2016. Snooty, the Manatee resident of South Florida Museum in Brandonton, turned 68. Snooty was born on July 21, 1948 in Miami but now lives at the museum's Parker Manatee Aquarium and is thought to be the world's oldest known manatee born in captivity. The aquarium also works as a rehabilitation facility for manatees treated from injuries before they are released back into the wild, the museum said. Fans queue for 24 hours for a chance to meet their heroes when the Game of Thrones cast crew arrives at Comic-Con to reveal very little about the show's future. Actor Christian Nairin received the loudest welcome as he entered the panel at the annual San Diego Pop Culture event. Fans who weren't able to attend the exclusive panel could participate in the world's 
West Ross by having their face included in the Hall of Faces, a key occasion in the journey of the young orphaned Arya Stark in the series. And in sports news, Indian golfer Rashid Khan has won the Sri Lanka Open Golf Championship tournament, which is concluded at the Royal Colombo Golf Links yesterday. Many leading local and foreign players have taken part in the four-day tournament. Indian competitors have displayed their exceptional skills at the tournament. Sri Lankan representatives Anre Rohan, B.A. Sanjeeva, M. Tyagaraja, Mithul Pereira and Kray Prabhagaran were also among the top ten players. The awards presentation was conducted under the patronage of the Indian and Pakistan High Commissioners in Sri Lanka. Ace American athlete Kendra Harrison has created a new world record in the 100-meter hurdles event at the London Diamond League tournament yesterday. The 28-year-old finished the event in 12.2 seconds. This was the best performance this year. She broke the record created by Yodanka Donkova of Bulgaria in the year 1988 by hundreds of a fraction of a second. The world's fastest athlete, Usain Bolt of Jamaica, finished the 200-meter event in 19.89 seconds. With the forecast, the Med Department says prevailing windy condition is expected to reduce from tomorrow and a slight change in the prevailing dry weather is expected during next few days. Several spells of light showers will occur in the western Sabaragamwa and central provinces and in the Jaffna, Gaul and Madhra districts. Showers or thunder showers may occur at a few places in the eastern and Uwa provinces after 2 p.m. And that's it for tonight's news. Do watch us tomorrow at the very same time. Good night.